Hi guys, welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to solve a question is about the steel structures, and the question will be uh, determining the flexible bulking strength of a loaded column. Now you can see on the screen. So now let's solve the question. Before we solve the question, if you like these videos, if you want to see more of the videos, please subscribe and share with your friends. If anything that you wish, please specify on the comments, and I am going to try to do my best. So now let's solve the question. The first I'm going to start to uh, determine the uh, effective length. Now you can see here effective length for uh, x direction. And this is going to be equal to uh, 4.5 meter. I'm going to convert it to centimeter for 150 multiplied uh, the value of k. What is k? If you remember, because of this is fixed and this is pin. The value of k, sorry, the value of k is going to be equal to 0 0.7, right? 0 0.7, and this is going to be equal to 315 centimeter as the uh, for the x direction. Now let's do it for the y direction also. Uh, now you can see there is no any difference uh, in the question about the supports at x and y, so it's going to be the same actually. But maybe in the question, it may be given different in the exams or other uh, questions. So you are going to be careful about that. Okay, so now we got it. So uh, let's determine the uh, slenderness of this um, section for flange and web, how it's going to be. First, I'm going to uh, calculate the slenderness. For the flange, let's write it for the flange. I'm going to check this table. Now I'm going to show you. I got the table for here for you. For the flange, I'm going to use this one because our section is a flange of rolled i shape section. Now you can see here. And for the webs, webs of doubly symmetric i shape sections and the channel. Now you can see here also both uh, we have. So this one is for, we, for the flange. This one is we used for the um, uh, web. Okay, so now let's do it. It's going to be B over T and smaller 0 0.56 square root E over FY. And I'm going to calculate it 306 over 2 and over thickness of uh, flange. And this is going to be 17. And now why this is 300 or as I say, 306 over 2. Why? Look at here. In the question, B is this length, okay? You can see B is this length. But when you check the table, you are going to do your calculations due to table, okay? In the table, this length, we are going to take the half of that. Look at here. This is B. The half of the uh, width of flange, uh, this is the half of that is actually uh, B, okay? So I'm going to uh, divide the 306, divide the 2, and I'm going to update it. So, when I divide the 17, I'm going to obtain as equal to 9, and this is going to be smaller, 0 0.56 multiplied square root of uh, 200,000, the modulus of elasticity, okay? And it's not given actually the question, but E is equal to 200 gigapascal, and this is equal to 200,000 megapascal, okay? And this is going to be uh, 355. Now look at here in the questions given. And this is going to be equal to uh, 13.29. Now we can see this is smaller than, this one smaller than this. So this is non slender Okay, so now uh, let's check it also for um, web. It's going to be H over TW, T web. Okay, things of web. Sorry, it's going to be smaller. I made a mistake. Smaller than 1.49 multiplied E over Fy. And this is going to be equal to 247 over 10.9. You can see here, taking so web, okay? And this uh, equal to 22.7 smaller than 149 multiplied 200,000 over 355 equal to 
36 and now you can see this is smaller than this one so it is non-cylinder okay so now I'm gonna show you how I obtained the 247 okay because um, uh, it is H actually it is from that point to that point so I'm going to D minus look at here this D is the whole length D minus 2 multiplied the thickness of uh, flange what is thickness of flange 17 right but thickness of flange I'm gonna write the formulation so you can uh, determine it uh, in the other questions by yourself and the uh, minus 2 multiplied this R okay this R is this one and this is 2 multiplied R and this is equal to H now you are going to obtain H like that so now you can see the both se uh, sorry, sections are uh, non slender so if they are non slender we are going to use here look at here this is for the chapter E for the compression members so I'm going to use here this part E3 it's going to be flexural buckling of members without slender elements okay so do not forget this one we are just going to follow the uh, specification of USA okay 310 yeah 360 yeah 360 10 so this is from 360 10 okay this page so e3 look at here how we are going to calculate the limit state of the uh, flexural buckling okay so it's going to be like that so we are going to now calculate the slenderness ratio this is kl over the radius of gyration is slenderness ratio so it's going to be calculated like that for example for slenderness ratio for x k multiplied l over ex so what is kl actually we calculated before you remember it is 315 right for x so it is 315 let's check here 315 over what is ex 13.49 and this is equal to 23.35 right now we got it so let's do it for also y okay this is for y uh sorry it's also k multiplied l over ey so what is that k is 315 so k uh, multiplied l is 315 centimeter over uh, ey is 7.72 okay and this is going to be equal to 30 yeah for sorry 40 point eight now we got the both slenderness ratio and due to this slenderness ratio look at here we are going to determine uh, one of these f critical okay so we are going to calculate the f critical due to this slenderness ratio okay or also uh, also you can make a check uh, as like that here you can see this one and this one both of them are valid so now we got the slenderness ratio so let's uh, make a comparison from the uh, with this uh, comparison now you can see we are going to make right here as for example kl over l we uh, calculated for both direction so let's do it also do this one 4.71 multiplied the modulus of elasticity over fy right so what is that this is going to be actually equal to 4.75 sorry 71 multiplied 200,000 over uh, actually fy is 355 and this is going to be equal to 111.79 so now we got it you can see so uh, this we are going to take the slenderness ratio which one is bigger which one this one is smaller this one is bigger so we're going to take this one okay so slenderness ratio smaller than uh, this value that we uh, calculated okay this one so we are going to use that formula to calculate the f critical so for f critical we are going to calculate the, we are going to use this formula but before the f critical look at here in the formulation of critical we have elastic buckling stress for a uh, value okay this is this is fe so we are going to use that uh, to calculate f critical but before that you have to calculate the elastic buckling stress so this is the one so i'm going to uh, delete this one i'm gonna just write the uh, uh, 
Elastic buckling stress calculation. P square multiplied E over K multiplied L over E. Okay, which one? We are going to write E. Why? Right? Because it is bigger one. So, now from this calculation, it's going to be P square multiplied 200,000 over, sorry, 40.8 square. And this is going to be equal to 1185.79 megapascal. Okay, now if you got this one. So if you got the uh, elastic buckling stress, so let's calculate the critical uh, stress. Okay, for the critical stress, it's going to be 0 0.658 over uh, the formulation. Let's check Fy. Look at here, this is Fy. Fy over Fe. Okay, and multiplied with Fy. So, from this formula, we are going to write it 0 0.658 over 355 over 1185.79. Okay, and multiplied 355. And from here, I'm going to obtain as the, um, the critical stress. The critical stress is going to be equal to 313. 0.2 megapascal. Now we got F critical, so let's check the formulation of uh, the bug flexure buckling stress. Uh, so yeah, sorry, it's flexion buckling limit. What is that formula? Look at here, Pn equal to F critical multiplied Ag. So the the gross cross section the gross cross sectional area. Uh, so let's write it here. It's going to be uh, Pn equal to F critical multiplied the gross cross sectional area. There is no any uh, bolt on this uh, member, so the area is equal to the area that is given. Okay, here in the question now, look at here. I'm going to show you this area. Now it's in the question it's written, but if you remember for uh, designing of LFRD, we have a coefficient. Okay. Phi. This phi coefficient is 0 0.9. Okay, this is 0 0.9, and we have to use it always. We have to use it. So this is going to be uh, here, and I'm going to write it here. Okay, so let's write it. 0 0.9 multiplied 313.2, and multiplied. I'm, I have to convert it to millimeter square. Ah, oh, sorry. Not that I don't have that here. I made a mistake. And from here, I'm going to obtain as 3839.2 kilo Newton as the uh, flexible buckling limit. Okay. So now I guess you understand how we are going to solve the compression members. We are just always try to follow the specifications and we are going to do what it says. Okay. So now the question is solved. So see you for the next question.